Good morning, this is Jeremy. It's uh, Tuesday, April the 14th. We're in Toronto and Toronto's in lockdown. However, we're uh, working away as we uh, have done for the past couple of weeks. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, AIS uh, modulation using GMSK. Uh, in a previous post uh, of July last year, uh, we looked at AIS and we looked at um, AIS is Automatic Identification System. It's a navigation system that ships use. Uh, they have a transponder uh, on the ship and it sends out information from its uh, GPS or, or uh, its navigation systems to noti notify nearby vessels uh, that it's around. So you don't necessarily need radar on an AIS screen. You can see the transponders of all the close, uh, close vessels. It's similar to the ADSB system used in, um, in aircraft uh, reporting. Uh, <clears throat> we can see here, um, there's the post from last year, and um, you can see that we're using uh, a, a small receiver, it's a RTL-SDR receiver, I've got it here, yeah. and uh, there it is in the post with a small antenna. So what we did last year is we went down to Harborfront, I used multi-PSK uh, to decode uh, the packets coming from the AIS uh, transponders and we were able to locate several ships. You can see the writing in there. They were down at uh, um, the bottom of Har Toronto Harbor front there. There's one notification there. So that's what we did last year. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'd like to talk to you about how we could build a modulator. Uh, AIS uh, uses the um, GMSK modulation uh, method. Uh, this method is, is, um, is excellent for uh, especially uh, nonlinear amplifiers because it has a very clean spectrum. There's very little out of band uh, component, and there are no discrete lines. <clears throat> here's uh, here's a bit of the blog post describing this. Uh, now I get my data from uh, the specification for AIS is recommendation ITU M thirteen seventy one dash five. That's the latest one. And uh, in the blog post here, I've just summarized some of the um, the information about AIS. It was invented by a Swedish inventor, Hakan Lanz, similar to ADSB for aircraft. It uses uh, two channels, two VHF channels, 87B and 88B at 161.975 megahertz and 162.025 megahertz. It uses a uh, GMSK modulation, that's Gaussian minimum shift keying. Data rate is 9.6 kilobits per second. Now the MSK modulation system, the way it works is it uh, the frequency shift is half the data rate, and we'll see how that gives us an excellent result with no discrete lines. And then the Gaussian filter smooths the uh, data so that you don't get out of uh, channel uh, information. It uses the HDLC packet protocol, which is uh, it's, it's been around for a long time. It was used in X25, and it's similar to an IBM protocol from many years ago. It uses SOT TDMA, self-organizing time division multiplexing. Uh, there are different classes of stations in AIS. There's class A, class B, uh, and aids to navigation. Some of these particular classes don't use SOT TDMA. They use, let's say, carrier sense um, time, division, time division multiple access. So let's look at um, an AIS frame. An AIS frame is one minute long, which is 60,000 milliseconds, 60, se 60 seconds times 1,000 milliseconds per second. That's, uh, that's 60,000 milliseconds. And in that frame, you have a choice of 2250 slots. So if I take 60,000 milliseconds and divide it by 2250 slots, I get 22.667 milliseconds per slot. Now in each one of these slots, I'm going to stick in some AIS data. So there's 256 bits in that slot. If I was to take the um, 26.667 milliseconds divided by 256 and invert that, you'd get 9600 bits per second. So that's so it's all consistent there. So in here we have the AIS information. It's a payload of 168 bits. At the beginning, you have an 8-bit ramp-up period for the transmitter. You have a preamble for synchronization. You've got the HTLC start flag 7E, that's 0111110. And then you've got a 16-bit CRC. So this tells you if the, um, the slot was received correctly. If it isn't, then there'd be an error. This would tell you you made an error. 
and then you've got the stop flag 7e and then you got a 24-bit buffer in case there's um, bit stuffing in here sometimes if you've got too many ones uh, it'll do bit stuffing now down here uh, what I've what I've uh, mentioned here is that and the HDLC uses NRZI coding so what happens is um, if you have a zero it means you have a transition so um, when you see zero in the data that means whatever the previous bit was you flip it so zero means flip the bit so it's a particular type of coding down here what I'm showing is I'm going to show you in a minute um, this is uh, a psychoslab uh, script file and in here I'm going to build the slot data so there's my ramp my preamble my start my message my CRC my stop and my buffer so I've created the packet there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, convert that to NRZI so I'm going to flip the bit if I see a zero and then I'm going to build the structures that I need for my modulator Here's a Psychos, a, a visual builder block that I can use to look at my data. And down here is a look at the data that I've just created in that script file. So there's my original packet data, zeros and ones. And down here is the NRZI data. So in other words, when, when I've had a zero here, I flipped the bit. So you can see lots of activity in here. I've also made this bipolar because we're going to drive a, a linear uh, phase continuous uh, VFO and the minus one will be the lower shift and the plus one will be the positive shift of the uh, uh, FM modulation. Now here's the data from the AIS parameters data rate 9600. Now in GMSK what we do is we make the shift equal to half the data rate so the data rate is 9600 bits per second so our shift is going to be 4800 hertz so from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency it's going to be 4800 hertz or from the center frequency it's going to be 240 hertz either side now just for visibility in psychos uh, i'm going to make my uh, center frequency at 10 kilohertz otherwise it's just you know i won't be able to look at the sidebands and everything because it'd just be you know 176 megahertz in the math it just doesn't work out I can't see it with the uh, FFT so we're going to use 10 kilohertz the Gaussian filter BT uh, product is 0 0.4 okay so what we're doing here here's a psychos model to show you the properties of GMSK now I'm using a PN sequence generator here so I have continuous data if I just use the one slot data it's not a lot of data so I don't get enough um, I don't get a very strong uh, FFT so here I'm continuously generating the data so I want to I want to show you the properties of GMSK there's my carrier set up at uh, 10 kilohertz I shift either side by 240 Hertz okay and then we're going to look at the scope and the uh, FFT and that's my uh, Gaussian filter so there's the GMSK modulation notice the smooth uh, spectrum here there are no discrete lines and there's no out of carrier uh, components here so it's a very clean signal now here what we've done is I've taken out um, I've taken out the Gaussian filter so what you see now is you see lots of garbage here out of channel so this would be this would, wouldn't be desirable because you'd have your transmission here on your carrier frequency but you'd be ruining other people's slots there with uh, out of band products down here what I'm showing you is what happens if I don't have half the data rate shift let's say I make the shift the full data rate 9600 Hertz well you see here what's happening is you're getting discrete products you're getting discrete lines in here if I was to put this signal through a sort of a not so hot amplifier you get all sorts of intermod products and garbage so that's the beauty of uh, MSK is that if you pick the the shift correctly you get a nice smooth spectrum without the discrete lines now down here is the same model but now I'm reading in just the slot data from that particular slot and then we can look at the um, we can look at the data that's the NRZ data from minus one to plus one now this is what happens after it goes through the Gaussian filter so you can see the Gaussian filter has smoothed the edges so they're not that sharp 
and that's the VCO output. You can see it's a phase continuous. There are no, sh there are no phase hits at the bit boundaries. It's nice and continuous. So let's actually go to our uh, Psychos model here. And um, that's the ITU specification. Uh, so there's our script file that we use to create the NRZ data. So here I'm building my packet. There's my ramp, my preamble, my start, my message, CRC, stop, and buffer. I assemble them all together as the data. And then in this bit of code here, I, I create the NRZI. In other words, if I have a zero in my data, then I get a transition. Down here, I'm just converting this to bipolar because I want to drive the face continuous VCO. And here I'm creating my structures to feed into my um, Psychos uh, model. So now I can go into Psychos. So here's a model I use to read in the data from the workspace. Okay, so that's my original data and that's my NRZ data. So we can have a look at the, uh, the difference. So there we're running our model. Okay, so let's just expand the beginning here just to look at this. Okay, so in the ramp up bits, I had a bunch of zeros there. So that's my original data, zeros and ones. Notice this is the NRZI data that goes from minus one to one. So I started the NRZI data at one. So when I saw a zero, this was at one, it went down. It saw another zero up here, so it flipped. So this is always flipping. Every time it sees a zero, it flips. So you can see here was a zero, so that flipped. Uh, there was a zero, so that flipped, etc. So that shows you the, um, the original data and the NRZI. Let's open up another model here. Let's open up the G AIS GMSK. If, if you don't see it properly, you can just say a fit diagram to figure. So there we go. So here what I'm doing is I'm using a PN sequence generator to drive my Gaussian filter and VCO. Uh, I'm also copying the data to the workspace. Uh, in a previous post, we looked at how we can um, create a CSV, a comma delimited CSV file to drive our test equipment. So I want to actually drive my PicoScope with this GMSK waveform. So I'm copying that to the workspace and I'm going to create the CSV file. So if we um, simulate this, let's see what we get here. <clears throat> Let's look at these waveforms. So that's my original NRZI uh, data. This is after it goes through the Gaussian filter. You can see it's nicely smoothed. And that's my VCO. And you can see at, at the zero crossings, there are no phase hits. So it's phase continuous. And if we look at the spectrum here, we can see a nice clean spectrum with no out of uh, out of channel uh, products. Let's just see what happens if I change, if I go into the context here, is where I've set up the parameters of the model here. Uh, this is the oscillator settings. Let's make the shift to the oscillator uh, a full uh, bit rate. So it's a bit rate over two on either side. So instead of shifting 4800 hertz, I'm going to shift 960 hertz. And let's see what happens there. Not interested in these waveforms I'm interested in the spectrum so now you see what happens with the spectrum I get spectral lines here now so I'm not using MSK I'm not using minimum shift keying anymore I'm kind of like it's kind of like FSK now I've got a huge shift uh, equal to the data rate so I've got these discrete lines here and if you put that through an amplifier you're gonna get all sorts of intermods so that's not desirable okay so let's open up um, Let's open up MSK. So let's look at what happens when we don't have the uh, Gaussian filter. Let's run this. And there we see all the out-of-band products, okay? So basically, the combination of 
minimum shift keying where you shift at half the bit rate and adding the Gaussian filter gives us a nice clean spectrum which is what we want. Now the final thing we can do is we can actually look at our generator and uh, there's a picoscope and let's see if we could generate that that uh, GMSK waveform. So remember what we do is we open the arbitrary generator. Now that's my 100% um, modulated AM from the previous post. Let's load in the file that we've created. Uh, we just created. It's an AIS. It should be there. AWGGMSK. So that's the file. Okay, now it looks very dense. We'll have to go here and uh, let's zoom in. So there we go. So there's our VCO and you can see it's nice clean signal and uh, the no phase hits at the zero crossings. So it's going through uh, its maximum and minimum um, shift there. So basically then we've looked at um, AIS, the GMSK modulation uh, waveform. We've looked at how to create the slot data. We looked at what the transmit data looks like. Uh, with the Gaussian filter and the MSK keying, we've got a very clean output waveform, which we can, can go through a not-so-great RF amplifier because there are no discrete lines and there are no out-of-channel components.